Today's topic is all about managing IBS in women. So we're going to focus on the diet. We're going to focus on the stress that it causes in women. And we're also going to talk about the transformational therapy you can do in order to alleviate the symptoms of IBS. So let's start with the one thing. Why do I want to talk about this? Because a lot of my clients are suffering from IBS. So what is IBS? IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. So this common condition is affected in where? The digestive system. It causes symptoms like bloating, diarrhea, and constipation, right? And with having constant stomach pain, cramping, bloating, gas, diarrhea, and again, the constipation, these symptoms come and go in my clients. But the worst thing is that majority of the world population, especially 1 billion people worldwide suffer from IBS. And women are more likely to be affected than the men. Yeah, that's why I wanted to cover this topic because it's really relevant to us. And maybe you're having these symptoms, but you've never gotten the diagnosis. So whether you are in constant bloating, cramping, this might be something for you. So stress is something that can significantly worsen IBS symptoms. And why is that? Because the gut and the brain, they communicate through what we call the gut brain axis. Bear with me. I will ex explain everything about what it is, right? But what happens is the communication between the gut and the brain is disrupted. It starts, to, stops to communicate. So this communication is key to how we digest our food, how we process our food, how we ingest your nutrition through the food. So the problem is the network, that network of communication that goes from the gut all the way to the brain. And this is why people with IBS often experience a higher level of anxiety and yeah, depression. Because I don't know about you, but not having a proper working gut, not having a proper working tummy, <laughs> that makes me depressed and it gives me anxiety. So anxiety and depression are very common symptoms in people with IBS. And this causes mental health issues, right? And they can worsen with time. They can create a cycle, a bad cycle of stress and discomfort. So what can we do to manage this? What can we do to manage IBS? Well, maybe you've been to a doctor, maybe you've been to the doctor, maybe you've got the diagnosis, but believe it or not, there is more to it than just going to the doctor. You can actually, with the techniques of mindfulness, meditation, and even psychological therapy, it can help you manage stress. And in turn, that will alleviate the IBS symptoms. How awesome is that? So let's get into it. Now I'm going to tell you one thing, because we are focused on the female body, women, right? So women, women's stomachs are actually working in a completely different way than, than men's. And you need to know this, that we are physiology, we are so much more different than men. And it goes all the way <laughs> into not only our reproductive system, but also our gut, the lining of our gut. So we have a tendency to empty our stomachs more slowly and me than men. Did you know this? This is like so interesting. But that can actually, if it's not done in the proper way, it can lead to nausea and bloating. Like just the other day, I was complaining to my partner. I was saying after we ate, I feel nauseous, I feel nauseous, I feel nauseous. And for the love of him, he couldn't understand why, because we ate the same thing, right? But since food moves a little bit more slowly through our intestines, this can cause constipation and with a high frequency of these occurrences that causes anxiety and depression, right? So 
I mentioned to you that the brain is linked through what we call the gut brain axis. This is a two way communication system and it's believed that our mental health, our female mental well being is actually affected by the gut health. And people with IBS, women with IBS, are twice as likely to struggle with anxiety and depression. Let's normalize this. Do you have a tummy that's constantly upset? Let's normalize it. This can actually be connected also to your mental health. And as soon as fast as possible as you normalize it, you will understand the root cause of why you're going through it. So. What can we do if you're suffering from IBS or let's just say stomach aches every now and then and you don't have that diagnosis, but you are realizing as I'm talking that, wow, this sounds like me. Oh, this really sounds like me. Then there is a chance that you have IBS. And if you don't have IBS, when we have an upset, uh, upset stomach, what does that usually lead to? It leads into us not feeling our best, right? Us not being able to function. Fun in our uh, as our best so let's talk about something that doctors don't talk about and uh, I'm gonna be honest with you you guys know that I have all the love and respects for the medical system but I also have a lot of nightmare stories from the medical system and the medical system in the Western Hemisphere is made into one big thing and that is to be constantly connected to the big pharma the big pharma will keep you using drugs because they benefit from it and this is is a system that benefits from each other. Now, I wish that the medical system would have more understanding how the gut is actually related to so many of our physical ailments, to so many of the diseases that we have now in the world that just keep on growing and becoming more and more. And one of the keys here is anti-inflammatory foods. So the benefits of the anti-inflammatory diets for women with IBS, this diet, actually, I'm not going to call it a diet. I'm going to call it the lifestyle. It focuses on eating foods that reduce inflammation in your body. And this can help you manage your IBS symptoms. Some of the key foods here, just to give you a few examples, is more fruits, more veggies, whole grains, healthy fats like omega 3s lean proteins, examples also that are very important are berries, leafy greens, oats, salmon, and chicken. And foods that that we need to avoid. Basically, I would say, even though you don't have IBS, these are foods that we really need to start avoiding is processed food, refined carbs, trans fats, excessive alcohol. And yeah, I'm sorry, my lovely coffee drinkers, even caffeine should be minimized as this can increase a huge inflammation in the body. Bear with me. There is a reason why we're talking about this because eating anti-inflammatory foods can lower the inflammation in the gut. And when we lower the inflammation in the gut, the IBS symptoms such as pain and bloating, they go away and you're starting to manage them. And you're also starting to understand how you can support your gut. When you start to say, okay, I can't eat berries because when I eat berries, then immediately my gut, it, my, my stomach just bloats, right? And then you start to remove that. Slowly but surely, you start to understand more what is affecting your body. So healthy eating and eating an anti-inflammatory diet foods, they can actually help you alleviate those IBS symptoms. But the best overall benefits are that they will affect your mood. They will reduce the stress and they will benefit that two way communication system between the gut brain axis. 
the two-way communication system that is so important. When the gut stops talking to the brain, when the brain stops talking to the gut, this is where we create the body and inflammation. And this is where IBS is the most happy, right? So start by slowly adding those anti-inflammatory foods to your diet. Make sure to stay hydrated, pay attention to how those different foods affect your symptoms and start to reduce the foods that you notice are giving you those bloats. All right, so how can those benefits of anti-inflammatory diets benefit women with IBS, right? Because it's all correlated, it's all uh, linked. One thing that you need to understand is that we women have a lot of hormonal fluctuations. So why are we, uh, why are we more affected than men? Yes, it's our hormones. I'm sorry to say, but that is the thing. We have a slower gastric emptying. We have higher rates of anxiety and depression. This is just a giving because our hormones go up and down and up and down. Women are two to six times more likely to develop IBS than men. And this is often due to exactly hormonal fluctuations, slower gastric emptying, and higher rates of anxiety and depress, uh, uh, sorry, depression. And again, as fast as we understand this and normalize this, it's gonna be easier for you to seek alternative methods for relief because you don't have to live with this. Understanding is power. Understanding is the most liberating thing. And when you understand why your gut is doing the things that it's doing, you can start to slowly alternate the way that you're eating by number one, adapting that anti-inflammatory diet, and then also understanding your hormonal balance. Because anti-inflammatory foods, they also balance your hormones. And this can alleviate your menstrual cramps, for example, if you're still on a menstrual cycle. So reducing IBS symptoms, will be related to your menstrual cycles. Take note, how do I feel when I'm ovulating? How do I feel when I'm bleeding? How is my gut acting differently during this time? And start to include foods that are a little bit more rich in antioxidants during the time of bleeding. I'm gonna tell you this, my friends, like chocolate, Dark chocolate is a good friend. It's a really good friend during your uh, menstrual cycle when you are uh, bleeding. So since we have a slower digestion, it's really important to understand that if you eat a diet that is rich in high fiber, that is gonna create more regular bowel movements and that will reduce constipation. So again, try to bring in a little bit more leafy greens, a little bit more foods with vitamins and minerals. And last but not least, when you incorporate those anti-inflammatory foods into your system, that will actually help you alleviate anxiety and depression because it's all linked, right? When we have a gut that's not working, when our tummy is saying, hey, I'm not feeling so good, you're not feeling so good. Let's just be honest about it. So practice regular mindfulness, regular exercise, all of these will enhance the benefits. So you should definitely, as a woman, pay attention to your body. Pay attention to your body during your menstrual cycles, the different cycles of your menstrual cycle. Pay attention to when do you eat during the time of the day. Pay attention also to how much water you drink, what you eat, and so on and so on. And you will be able to adjust your diet accordingly. So understanding that inflammation and IBS is really linked, it's correlated. You need to understand that inflammation is a natural response of the immune system. It's a natural response of the immune system to protect your body from harm. It's your body signaling to you, saying that, hey, 
something is not right. However, chronic inflammation can lead to various health issues, including those digestive problems like IBS. So IBS is an inflammation in the gut. And when we have an inflammation in the gut, that will do what? It will create discomfort in your digestion, in your mental health, in your physical health, and even in your emotional well-being. And by reducing inflammation through, for example, diet, exercise, better sleeping patterns, you will be able to significantly change your IBS symptoms. So the key component, remember, I'm going to say it again, it is anti-inflammatory food. So go and check that out. Check that out what that means to you and try to experiment. Try to bring in more fruits, uh, more vegetables, whole grains, healthy fats, lean proteins, and check what different herbs and spices can do. Like for example, turmeric, ginger, and garlic are known for their anti-inflammatory benefits and if you incorporate them into your meals you're getting a huge benefit but you again you need to experiment and you need to try it out bit by bit so to effectively reduce the inflammation in your gut is also crucial to avoid certain things right that can trigger or worsen it again processed foods refined carbs trans fats and excessive alcohol and sorry also caffeine when you understand that your gut and your brain are linked that they need to talk to each other you're going to be able to understand why that anxiety and that depression is there and by reducing that inflammation that's going to help you improve your mental and emotional well-being so how do you do this start slowly one bit surely but slowly gradually incorporate more anti-inflammatory foods into your diet allow your body to adjust stay hydrated drink plenty of water to support digestion and overall health mindful eating oh i love this mindful eating what does that mean pay attention to how different foods affect your symptoms and adjust your diet accordingly and also bear in mind how fast do you eat your food what are you doing while you're eating your food are you scrolling on instagram on TikTok, or are you actually enjoying every single bite are you listening to the body signals of when the body tells you hey i'm good i don't need to eat anymore and then last but last not least if you really struggle with taking control of your life, taking control of your diet, then I would definitely look into consulting a nutritionist or a dietitian, even I'm going to come to that someone that can help you with transformational therapy to provide you guidance for support. So what can we conclude by this? When you make informed decisions, based on your diet, based on your health, based on the discomfort that you're feeling, and you're not neglecting it, you're actually listening to it. All of this will help you enhance your quality of life. So another thing that doctors don't go into is the root cause of IBS. They will give you something to alleviate the symptoms, but they won't give you something that will remove them. So with that irritable bowel syndrome, you need to understand that this is a complex condition and it has so many factors and you being a woman doesn't make it easier. I'm sorry. Um, and understanding again that the physiological, the hormonal and the psychological factors in this are huge. Understanding the root causes can help in developing more effective strategies for yourself. So where do we start? Well, number one, again, we need to understand our hormones, right? 
are hormonal fluctuations. Know that hormonal changes, especially those in your menstrual cycle, they do play a significant role. And this will follow you. This will follow you for perimenopause and also menopause. So estrogen and progesterone, these hormones will fluctuate throughout your menstrual cycle. And by you understanding how your gastrointestinal mobility and sensitivity is linked to your hormones, that will help you or it will worsen your IBS symptoms. For example, during menstruation, uh, a lot of women go for hormonal shifts and these hormones are going to affect and influence your gut mobility. And this is going to, this is going to lead to more bloating, more constipation and more diarrhea. And we don't want that. And what do we women usually crave when we go into that menstruation time? We want more fat. We want more carbs. We want more sweet. What does that tell you? Does that tell you that you should opt in for McDonald's? That is it tell you that you should opt in for McDonald's. Have you seen all of these TikToks, these reels and Instagrams of, of women posting that, oh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, on my menstruation and um, you see the woman going to the store, getting herself, you know, chocolate, ice cream, uh, loads of like trans carbs. It, it's, uh, and, and we're like, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yes, I understand what you're going through. And it's not easy because that's what we are craving. Know this, that when you are bleeding, your body is going through a stressful time. And this is why your body wants energy. And this is why you're tending towards that sugar. You're tending towards that fat. You're tending towards those trans carbs. But what can you do? If you want sugar, go for fruit. If you want fat, go for uh, fatty protein, uh, like lean protein. If you want carbs, go for whole grains, right? So it's about understanding what is your body telling you? What is your body craving? And can you listen to your body during this? So when it comes to hormonal changes, even during pregnancy and menopause, this can also impact those IBS symptoms. For instance, uh, pregnancy often involves increased levels of progesterone, and this will slow down your digestive transit. So it will slow down the way you digest your food and it will cause constipation. And the same applies in menopause because usually progesterone is either too low or too high in menopause, but what it does, it also affect how fast you digest your food. And this is why you have that constant bloat and constipation, right? So what is gastrointestinal mobility? I, 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 I mentioned this before. Gastrointestinal mobility compared to men, again, we women have a slower gastric emptying. We empty our tummies, we empty our gut, we empty our intestines much slower than men. So, and this leads to that bloating. This leads to that discomfort. Another thing is that when our food moves more slowly through the intestines, and I say we, I mean our, our women, this is the moment where our gut and our brain stops talking to each other and says, okay, well, if you're not going to listen to me, how about we give you a little bit more constipation and a little bit more of those IBS symptoms for you? That's how it works. That's how it works, my friend. So there is a well-documented link here between mental health and gut health. And as I said before, how do you feel when your belly is bloated? How do you feel where your stomach is not working in that optimal way? You don't feel good, do you? No, your mental health, your emotional health is so linked to that gut feeling. And the faster you understand that this is part of that gut brain axis, the two way communication of how the gut and the brain communicates, you realize that something is not right. 
that communication cord, you know, those old telephone line cords has been broken and you need to create a new system, a new network where the gut and the brain communicate together. Psychological stress is going to cause you even more imbalance in your gut. It's going to cause you even more chronic gut issues. And this will, of course, bring you more mental health conditions. Another thing that we women have a tendency to bear a little bit more is psychological stress. We're very resilient when it comes to uh, psychological stress. It doesn't mean that we don't get it. We get it. We're just a little bit more, you know, uh, better at just biting our tongue and not saying anything, right? But women often report higher levels of psycho psychological stress and psychological stress triggers worse IBS symptoms. So it's crucial for us women to really manage our psychological stress. And even if you don't have IBS, you can actually cause IBS in the future. I usually say to, to people, I wish that I would be able to go back in time and warn my 20 year old self of not doing certain things because what you did in your 20s is going to affect you in your 40s and 50s and so on and so on does it mean that you're done does it mean that you're not going to be able you know to fix these problems absolutely not it just means that if you create awareness right here right now your dietary habits your lifestyle choices they are going to play a huge role in how you manage your chronic stress how you manage your IBS, how you manage that physical uh, and physiological stress in your body. So let's start here. Let's start now. So with all of this, right, the conclusion is that we women are multifaceted. We're so complex doesn't mean that we should give up on ourselves because we're so complex. Let me tell you that the medical system did. The medical system gave up. They said, you know what? We're just going to perform all of the studies on male bodies because the women are too fluctuating. Their hormones are too fluctuating and it's harder for us to read female bodies. It just means that we need to be a little bit smarter and understanding ourselves on a higher level. So again, your gastrointestinal mobility is linked to your anxiety. It's linked to depression. It's linked to dietary and lifestyle factors. All of this is connected. And by you understanding yourself, that's going to be even better. How can you do this? Well, we already said, right? Number one, go for that anti-inflammatory foods, understand your habits, but sometimes you need to also get to the root cause. Like for example, if the root cause for your IBS is anxiety and depression, you need to go to the root cause of why you have anxiety and depression. And for this, I'm going to tell you that the best thing that has worked for me and for loads of my clients is something that's called rapid transformational therapy. It's actually proven to help women with IBS. So what is RTT? What is rapid transformational therapy? It's a therapeutic approach where we combine hypnotherapy, psychotherapy, cognitive behavior therapy to address the root cause of your issues. So for example, in regular therapy, you talk a lot about your issues. You, you might through talking and understanding what you're saying, go to the root cause, but then the issue of understanding how to get rid and eliminate that root cause that's where it fails and this is why rapid transformation therapy really really helps so if you would go back to the gut brain axis right remember that it's stress related it's anxiety 
related. And by addressing the root cause of your anxiety and your stress, these feelings, this understanding, these emotions are going to improve your gut brain communication. So what we need to do, we need to change our thought patterns. RTT helps us rewire negative thought patterns and beliefs that can trigger IBS symptoms. Now, do you see what I'm getting at? Again, go back, gut, brain are talking to each other. When they stop talking, your symptoms become more crazy. When you understand that these negative thought patterns are linked to behaviors and limiting beliefs that you have somewhere acquired along the line, you can actually help yourself to get rid of them and create a more positive symptoms and alleviate the IBS. So RTT, it builds emotional resilience by helping women develop stronger coping me mechanisms for stress and anxiety. They are tailored to each individual's experiences, right? No person is the same. And this is why I love it so much. It addresses the specific psychological and emotional factors that is unique to you and your IBS symptoms. And it provides a long-term relief. So by targeting the underlying root cause, by understanding what is the root cause of my stress and anxiety, RTT can actually help you eliminate that. So with a qualified RTT therapist, you can eliminate your limiting beliefs, your destructive habits and behaviors. You can get help in combining all of that, getting rid of the old, combining it with a new improved you, installing better habits, a newer, healthier lifestyle, uh, like for example, be more understanding of the choices that you do around your diet and exercise, mindfulness, rest, sleep, and so on and so on. That support is going to create that long lasting benefit for you. And this is why I truly believe in RTT. So RTT definitely helped me to get rid of some of my worst gut symptoms because I think that we're all understanding that it's it's correlated it's it's linked more and more and when you understand that your body is screaming for you to listen because somewhere along the line you stopped listening right you cut the cord with the gut or the gut cut the cord with the mind so it's either way and this is why it's so important for us to tap in and listen to what is really going on so let's bring it all together these are the top four ways to reduce stress for women with ibs Number one, exercise, yoga, brisk walks, uh, dance, all of that is shown to work better for you to improve your IBS symptoms. Second, meditation. If you do eight weeks of mindfulness-based stress reduction, that includes, for example, 30 minutes of daily meditation, this will actually significantly improve those IBS symptoms. There is a study uh, that was made on, on individuals, uh, how eight weeks of mindfulness helped them. They reduce those IBS symptoms. Acupuncture is a way to alleviate stress through pressure points in the body. So it reduces the pain, it reduces the constipation that's connected to the pain, right? Because what happens when we're in pain, we're tensing up and that creates more stress also in, in the gut. And then last but not least, my favorite one, rapid transformational therapy, which is a type of uh, psychotherapy 
that can improve those psychological symptoms, help you to get down to that root cause, get it released, get rid of it, help you install a new, better version of you. All right. I hope my friends that this little talk about women and IBS, it gave you some, some inspiration, some understanding that it is worth listening to your body, that it is doable to manage IBS in women by linking together the gut and the brain. We've been talking about brain health a lot lately. And the more we talk about it, the more I understand that this is one of the missing links in women, that we're so disconnected from our bodies and everything is connected. Your mind, your heart, your body, your gut. All of that is connected. And when you stop listening to your body's needs, your body's wants, where you with constant stress and overwhelm, stop listening to your heart's inner desires, this is where the body starts to form ailments, ailments, diseases, and so on and so on, in order for you to finally start listening. But instead of us listening, what do we do? We go to the doctor, we get pills for it. Listen to what your body is trying to tell you. Reach and go deeper. The answer is there deep within yourself and you can get help in getting to the root cause of why you're feeling the way that you're feeling.